Hi, this is Neil Vimal Kumar and welcome to the series on staying strong. Os Guinness, social thinker, famously said, contrast is the mother of clarity. In a world of uncertainty, where there are more questions than answers, more fear than faith, more uncertainty than confident living, how may you and I navigate through the stages of life? I want to take your attention to a small book tucked away in the early pages of the Bible, the book of Ruth. It has all of four chapters. You could read the whole book in a matter of seven minutes flat. You would find this book is amazingly realistic in the narrative that it shares, at the same time romantic as well. And there are perspectives to learn from there. What I propose to do is juxtapose more than one perspective together to try and see is there a new meaning that will emerge the way we look at our challenges in life. Firstly, in life, the journey is as important as the destination. Well, the reverse is also true. The destiny is as important as the journey. Look at the story and the characters here. You have Elimelech and Naomi moving to the land of Moab for a season because of famine in the land. They were journeying. But there it became a very tragic story for them, one after the other, as Elimelech dies. And both of their sons, after their marriage, also died. Now Naomi is alone, and then she realizes there is a harvest in the land of Bethlehem, which really means house of bread. So she wants to come back to Bethlehem. She is journeying back. Her daughters-in-law want to go with her. Eventually, it's only Ruth who goes with her. So they come to Bethlehem and the people are looking at her and saying, Hey, is this Naomi? To which she says, Please don't call me Naomi. The Almighty has made my life better. Call me Mara. Now what happens is, at that station, she is so overwhelmed with her sorrow and bereavement, she has got nothing pleasant about her at that stage in life. But now that we can look at this book retrospectively, we know how in chapter 4, the Lord had blessed her, blessed her daughter-in-law through a kinsman redeemer who marries Ruth and eventually they have a son in whose lineage King David and much later the Lord Jesus Christ himself comes. So sometimes we mix up a particular station for a destiny. We assume things are never going to change because today is bad, today is hopeless, that's where I stand. No, we need to learn to move from one station to another. So when we look at life, our sorrow, our challenging moments as a station in this journey until we go to be with the Lord, that gives us a helpful perspective and sometimes comfort the most difficult of situations. The second two things I want to put together is a top-down approach and a bottom-up approach. Now, when you look at the story from the perspective of Naomi or Ruth, you see their challenges. The challenge is only mounting. It comes to a point where they don't have food and she is going to glean from the edges of somebody else's field. Very difficult, not very much hope available. But in that context, we find out that the Lord is moving her to Boaz's field. In chapter 2, we read, Naomi, Ruth starts gleaning from the field of someone she does not know. It happened to be the field of Boaz. So that was clearly beyond her vision. So we see how human beings, you and I, do our part, but then we have a hand, the Lord's eternal hand, guiding us step by step, bringing us back on track. And that's comforting to know, that it's not always from our perspective, but also the divine perspective and God's plan, which is much higher than our ways, really matter. I want to give you a few other ideas of how to juxtapose seeming opposite perspectives to try and make sense of difficult situations. Thirdly, you could look at it this way. You could think about life as discrete incidents. You could look at life as a continuum. Is there some connection to what happened to me yesterday to what happens today? Is there a continuum or is it discrete? It's good to know that all of life is connected. We are being made more in the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a continuum, but it also helps look at life as discrete chapters. 
what we learned yesterday might be very different from what we learned today. So it's helpful sometimes to look at it as a continuum and sometimes to look at it as a discrete box, different chapters in life. We need to learn good time management to understand this thing and move on. We could also look at life as something that we plan. We have our plans. The Bible says the heart of a person has got many plans, but the Lord brings his purposes to fruition. We have plans, but then on the other hand, many times in life, we are caught with a pleasant surprise. We hadn't planned it, but it comes our way. Isn't that true in Ruth's story as well? Planning, human planning and effort is important. But at the same time, we need to remember that it is God who think, brings things to fruition. So we need to trust also in divine sovereignty and wait on the Lord for his guidance and for God's help. Finally, you could think about a difficult moment taking charge of the situation, understanding the situation and trying to solve it from our strength and ability. On the, the opposite would be trying to allow things to happen, take shape the way that would, almost believing in a kind of fatalism. Whatever will happen, will happen. So we don't take charge, we can let things or let circumstance decide what we do. But in life, it is helpful for us to look at it from more than one perspective to understand our problems, our situations, as we seek God's help and guidance to navigate through life. May God bless you in this occasion called life as you and I head home. May the journey be beautiful and meaningful also. God bless you.